Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. You know, I think a lot of us um, at all times, but particularly today, Good Friday, uh, have struggled with what's going on in uh, in Israel and Gaza. Uh, you know, we feel um, disgusted by what happened on October the 7th, but we also are very distraught at what's happening in Gaza. Uh, and, and, and to have both truths at the same time uh, when people are so polarized uh, today is is challenging. And uh, I was in church last Sunday, and the minister at my local church, I think, put things in in a wonderful perspective. And so I wanted to have uh, uh, Reverend Ken McDonald join us today and uh, and repeat some of what he said and elaborate, because I think he's recently traveled to the area. Uh, Reverend Ken, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Brian. It's good to be here and uh, marking Good Friday and a significant time and a significant weekend for us within the Christian faith. And it uh, is a challenge for us um, on this weekend, the holiest of times, to have those vi images of what is happening in Israel right now. Um, we do want to support both sides, as you say. Uh, we have uh, good connections uh, with our uh, Jewish uh, colleagues. Um, I've sometimes curled with some of them, and uh, it's good to have that relationship, and it's important. Uh, but also we notice what is happening with the Palestinians and the Palestinian refugees. And so we need to support uh, um, both of them in the suffering that they're going through. Um, it's hard to do much from this point of view uh, here in Canada, but we do want to be able to um, pray for them and care for them. You on so, Sunday put it in an interesting historical perspective, both from you know the perspective of 1948, which is what I think a lot of people think about, but you took it back to biblical times. Could you can you tell us a little bit about your references? Sure. Um, uh, this summer I was at a sound and light show at the Tower of David in the old city. They did a history of all the waves of people who had come through and conquered. Uh, that land. It uh, was a crossroads, so it was easily conquered and important for various groups. So it seemed like every hundred years it was dizzying to hear about how people came through that land. Uh, so uh, we know in, uh, in the story in the Bible about Moses coming to uh, Mount Nebo over in uh, Jordan, looking across the Dead Sea and saying, yes, this is the promised land. Uh, so the Hebrew people came to this place, the land of milk and honey. But of course, Canaanites were there. And so there was a displacement. So always people have been displaced. In 1948, uh, Palestine was under uh, British occupation and Israel was created. And it was hope for the people that they would have a home, a place to call their own. And it um, it meant that people were displaced. So we had uh, the challenge for all these years of the Palestinian refugees uh, trying to find some place in the land of Israel. You referenced a book written by a <clears throat> by a United Church minister, and uh, mm -hmm. and how it tried to to understand the uh, yes. the situation and the different positions. Tell us about that if you could. Well, a long time ago, fifty years ago. Um, so Al Forrest uh, was 15 years the editor of the United Church Observer. Um, he, uh, before that, was minister at First United uh, here in Port Credit. Um, he spent a lot of time traveling in different places in the Middle East. He was very familiar with the area, toured it quite regularly. He engaged with all the people on various sides uh, in that. And uh, he uh, spent time with the people and and wrote about their experience. And he wrote The Unholy Land, published in 1971. The Unholy Land. Oh, yes, The Unholy Land, sorry. Because we do, uh, the, he was making a point about, we call it so much about the Holy Land and it's very special, but really it was for him an unholy land. Uh, I was um, in Hamilton, uh, uh, Saskatchewan conference in 1973, a student minister at that point, people were angry and enraged. Um, they were saying that they tried to uh, build relationships with rabbis and synagogues in their own communities, that this was causing quite a problem for, for them. And uh, they were calling for Forrest to be fired. And uh, some have suggested that he had so much reaction to his book that uh, it caused his early death. 
he was not um, well received by the press here in Canada and the United States and in many places in the world because he was speaking what he called the truth, the truth about the challenge for the Palestinian refugees in Israel. So how do you think about the situation? I think that you know, you obviously were 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 impressed by that book or 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 impacted by that book. You've traveled through the holy or unholy land. Um and you I think put, you know, it into an interesting perspective uh, uh historically. How do you personally think that we not as Christians as as people in our, you know, in Mississauga and in Toronto and in Canada should be thinking about this situation and can there be two truths at the same time? A truth that that you know what happened on October 7th was absolutely disgusting and one of the worst things that could ever happen to a population ever. And what's happening in Gaza is horrific. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a recognition that uh, reconciliation is very hard when um, people have had different stories, different experiences, all of that. Uh, when I was uh, traveling in Israel and with many Jews that I've talked to over the years, it's uh, for them always living with this um, uh, fear that there is going to be um, um, somebody killed or a bomb go off on a bus or some part of a street, that that's a fear they live with all the time, and, and it's very hard for them. Uh, for the Palestinians also, there is that challenge and struggle because um, they are having uh, their homes and communities bulldozed uh, uh, in the West Bank uh, for illegal settlements uh, by the Jewish population to uh, to build on. Um, and so there are two sides, and how do those two reconcile? For us, uh, we can say, yes, we care about and are sympathetic with both sides. We understand. Uh, for them, they're really dug in. And um, as we know in, in our own experiences of conflict, it's very hard to be able to reconcile with people. I don't know at this point how the people sit down and talk to each other and come to some kind of resolution because um, it is so hard when when you've been so threatened. Uh, so we just try to do our best in trying to say, yes, we're sympathetic with both sides. And, and I was, as I was doing during this, the Lenten season, we've been having the extinguishing of the tenebrae candles during Lent. It's a little different kind of liturgy than what is usually with the tenebrae, which is about the shadows, the darkness. And we recognize that Jesus suffers with people who suffer here on earth. And this Good Friday, as we think about what Jesus went through, uh, we believe that he did this uh, for all of us who are suffering. And so we recognize today the suffering for both the Jewish people in Israel and for the Muslim Palestinians, um, the refugees uh, in their own land. And uh, we know that Jesus suffers with them on this day. You toured Israel and Jordan uh, this past summer, I understand. Did it bring you any any different perspective or special perspective on this situation? I, I think for me, it was it was the struggle of being in Israel. We had a Jewish uh, guide who talked about their situation. Um, we, of course, were going through Palestinian areas as well and seeing the suffering that they faced uh, and the uncertainty. And um, for me, it, it had an, kind of a, a sad aura over the whole of the country. For all of the people, it's sadness. Uh, when we went across the Allenby Bridge to Jordan, even though it's not a democracy, even though it's a very poor country, there was a kind of a lightness about it, um, a relief. Um, so it, it affected uh, me personally that way, that that I felt the, the suffering and the sadness for all the people in Israel. And that's what they live with for all their lives. Reverend, my mother was extremely involved in uh in her church, uh, the United Church, uh, served on Presbyterian, he was president of this and president of that and chairman of this and chairman of that. And she would always say, we are an Easter people. So you've spoken about Good Friday, but why do you think my mother would say we are an Easter people? What does that mean to you, sir? Um, on Easter Sunday, we will be looking forward to uh, sunrise services, to a kind of happiness, relief, 
uh, our understanding of what it means to be kind of alive and engaged in this time uh, that relief has been brought from the uh, Good Friday. Actually, um, um, Easter doesn't happen without Good Friday, that we need to face the suffering, we need to face the tenebrae. Um, be, to be able to experience the, the Easter resurrection, that new life comes out of struggles and sadness. Um, I think for me this Easter, as I think on Israel, it will maybe be, be hard to face that and to ex experience that because uh, I don't know as any of us uh, know there's any resolution to this problem that's going on in Gaza right now, that there won't be much good come from it. Remember back a while ago, Biden said to Netanyahu, um, and it's not his, his words, I can't recall them, but it was, uh, don't overreact to this the way the United States did to 9-11. And recall that in 9-11, 3,300 people died, which was horrible. Uh, but um, as a result of that, they went into Iraq because they thought there were nuclear bombs. They went to Afghanistan. The tens of thousands of people who have been killed, uh, the people's lives completely destroyed, a great upheaval uh, for all of the Middle East. And um, after, after doing that, uh, what can we say has been good that has happened from that? Um, I don't think many of us can think of anything. It was a sad time, and I think we're looking to that in Israel at this time as well. How do they experience some kind of Easter out of this Good Friday experience? Uh, how do they find new life and come to some kind of reconciliation? Wow, it will be hard. But I do think that my mother's attitude about we are an Easter people is that she had faith that there was a potential for rebirth, that there was a potential for peace, that there was a potential for resurrection there was a potential for uh something good to come out of this incredible disaster struggle and uh maybe i'm the eternal optimist and idealist but uh i hope there is and whether it's a two-state well, solution or 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 what um mm -hmm. there's gotta it's a be great a solution. hope and faith that your mother talked about that's what all of us are are yearning for at this time Reverend Ken McDonald, thank you so much for joining us and uh, and sharing with us your thoughts about what's going on in uh, in Israel and uh, and Gaza. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, and everyone have a great Easter coming up. We're going to take a break, and uh, after the break, I'm going to introduce you to a gentleman in uh, Reverend Ken's congregation who is trying to make a difference uh, in his own personal way by building a hospital in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, and I was inspired by by Jim as well, because here's one individual that's trying to make a difference. And if one individual can make a difference, maybe there's there's hope. Thank you. Back in two minutes.